in a conversation and he kind of got a hint of what was happening. And Lee said to his mom, well, actually two someone's brothers. And Melissa looked at Don and held up two fingers. And he smiled and kind of nodded. These boys were 11 and eight from Ethiopia. That brought them up to nine. But before they actually made the decision, they began they, a series of very difficult conversations uh, with each other and with the other kids. This had happened every time they had adopted a child from another country, every time a new child was brought into the family. It's always the siblings that seem so profoundly affected. And if it were a Disney or a Hallmark movie, you know, there'd be one big conflict moment, and then everything would be resolved, and everyone would live happily ever after, theme music and credits and over, you know. But... But real life is always messier than that. You know, it's odd, though. When parents decide to add a birth child to the family, they don't usually consult the other children. Not that there isn't plenty of sibling rivalry in, in birth families. But when parents decide to adopt a child, uh, it's, it's, it's very different. And there is usually that discussion. If, they rep if the children who are adopted represent other cultures and races and nationalities, if the children speak other languages, there are many things to consider, and it has a huge impact on the family. Melissa and Don started with four birth children. <clears throat> they adopted five older children from foreign countries. Eventually, with time and patience, they created a family. In biblical terms, they created a household. And for those children, they created a home. <clears throat> God works <clears throat> excuse me, in a very similar way. God works in that very same kind of way. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans, talks about that same process of adoption that God works with. The, the early church's down-to-earth problem was that the first followers of Jesus in Jerusalem thought of themselves as the birth children in the family. Paul felt called to spread the gospel to the Gentiles, with different cultures and races and nationalities. And the first followers did not welcome them so easily into the family. The adoption process was painful. And those first followers of Jesus from Jerusalem did not want to accept the new Gentile brothers and sisters unless they became as Hebrew as they were. Paul preached that God was the Father, and Christ was God's only son. And the rest of us are all adopted sons and daughters, none of us any more worthy than the rest. Christ lived, died, and rose for all of us. He is the birth child, and he welcomes us all in the name of God the Father. With Christ's arms open to us, we have no right to disown one another. Last week, this place was full. This was a full house. And so many here last week were our own children their children, our sisters and brothers and parents, the whole tribe gathered strong in one place. And it felt good, yes? <laughs> I heard more than one say, I wish it could be like this every week. A homegrown tribe is the most comfortable way to grow a church to grow a family, but it isn't the only way. 
God adopted us. God took us all in, so unworthy, so unlike God, so unlike his son, Jesus. And yet, we are so loved and so accepted. God took the chance with us, went through the trouble with us, took a risk with us as adopted heirs to the kingdom. Adoption. There's a little church in a cornfield in Indiana. Prettiest little church you have ever seen, built in 1862. Attended now by 14 of the nicest folks you'd ever want to meet. Actually, probably fewer now. I preached for them one Sunday, and they proudly showed me around the building, clean in a way that you gotta, you got to trust me, clean in a way you find remarkably consistently in Indiana. One of the places they showed me was the nursery. The nursery. All fixed up. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> All fixed up with a crib and a rocking chair with a quilt on the back. I wanted to weep thinking that these folks were prepared for young visitors. Visitors who never came. I quietly asked one of the women if they got many visitors. She said the nursery wasn't for visitors. It was for their own families when they came to visit, usually at Christmas and Easter. <laughs> A cautionary tale from Indiana. An inspirational story from Don and Melissa. And a lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans. Adoption. All over America, all over the world, the church families that grow are the ones that have learned to nourish their birth children and learn to adopt from outside the family. Even those who are very different from themselves. The churches that grow know how to create a full house by seeking out those in need of a home and by adopting those who God brings to them. And different might be just those raised across town or someone whose life has shaped them much different from themselves. It isn't the easiest way to build a family, but if we build our house this way, we will be building in accordance with the plans of the great builder, and we will live in hope that God will bless this house.
So let's grow this family. Consider God's plan. Consider family dynamics. Consider adoption. <laughs> um, more brothers and sisters in Christ's kingdom. More hands for the chore. More heirs for the kingdom. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.